will be starting soon, guys. Soon. Let's let everybody get logged in. I could see you in the chat, so uh, if you start letting me know your name, where you're from, I'd love to see that. Uh, we're going to get started real quick. What's up, guys? Jason, Ashley, Samar, Tanya. <sighs> All right, guys. Let's start this thing. We get bored in the salon because we're never trying anything new. If you stay educated, it gets you excited. It gets you wanting to try something new. You try that new thing on your guests, then all of a sudden you have a higher average ticket. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's podcast. So, switch over there. Oh, I'm excited to hang out with you guys. Uh, obviously, we're all hanging out with ourselves. So, um, excited to hang out with you guys. We're in the studio, in the salon. Obviously, we don't have any customers here, uh, but our whole, my whole family's here uh, in one room or another doing something, trying to get things done, trying to get through everything. So, uh, today, what I want to do and what I want to do continuing forward, especially through uh, the times that we're having right now is uh, where some people seem to be kind of running from things. I think we should double down and do what we do best and just stay focused. Uh, if you're a hairdresser, I think we should focus on learning um, from this standpoint. What I do best is teaching. So I want to keep teaching and stay connected with you guys. So I'm really excited to be um on here and hanging out what I've got planned for tonight and then tomorrow will be different. Um, but for tonight, what I want to do is I've got three of my older haircuts that, that are not old, they're timeless haircuts. Um, I'm not going to play those for you, but I'm going to play the video and I'm going to talk over it and walk you through some of my favorite things about it. Maybe I'll even critique myself. We'll have a little bit of fun with it. Um, but I got three different haircuts I'm going to show you guys tonight. So, um, I like showing these edited videos because, you know, I spend time taking out all the boring stuff and really we get to the point. So instead of just showing you one haircut tonight, I can actually show you three, uh, three haircuts probably in the next half an hour, 40 minutes. Uh, I just feel like we get more accomplished. So, um, what I do want to say is that also in these times, um, we've got companies like MinervaBeauty.com that, uh, just like us as hairdressers, all of these companies that support free salon education are also struggling. Uh, you know, I'm not saying Minerva's struggling, but I'm saying that all of us, we're not buying stuff right now. Um, so go support uh, the companies that have supported free salon education. If you're looking for anything, that they're having incredible deals right now, obviously, because uh, they want to support you as well. So at Minerva, uh, they're helping in any way they can. They're doing a relief sale up to 50% off things. So this cart that's brand new that I just got in the salon that I did a giveaway for, um, those carts are are. 48% off right now, which is ridiculous. So if you have money that you want to, you know, invest in some new stuff for your salon, definitely go check out MinervaBeauty.com uh, backslash FSE. Um, all right. So we're going to get started. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to be doing coming up is uh, I want to do a color video. Joico sent me some of their Youth Lock products or their LumaShine Youth Lock um, shades. So these are brand new shades and I want to do a technique based on that. So I've got this blonde girl here, um, the pivot point scent. So I, I want to do a color technique probably tomorrow for you guys. So if there's anything that you're looking to learn color wise, uh, any techniques that you've heard of or things that you want me to go over, just let me know uh, in the comments and I'll make sure that that's an upcoming class because I want to, you know, pop out some color videos as well. Um, all right. I can see all of you guys on here. Awesome. Uh, rep and beauty school. 
Hello from Mexico. Um, it's, you know, it's just, it's such a crazy thing right now that, uh, literally the whole entire world is going through the same stuff. Um, and it's just such a unique situation. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, what your job is, what you've done. Like, you know, we're all literally living the same day to day where we get up and we do the kind of the same thing. We don't have, there's nothing to do. So I think, uh, just staying educated and making sure that you're constantly pushing yourself forward. This is such a, a unique time to be able to really study and learn and, um, become better at what we do. Uh, I see so many people out there worrying about like, you know, their clients cutting their hair at home or whatever it is, but you, you got to realize that they could have cut their hair at home before. Now they might be bored. They might be trying things. They might, whatever it is. Remember when you, before you were a hairdresser, um, one of my favorite things to think about is the fact that every hairdresser has the story of how they became a hairdresser. And a lot of times it was, I've been experimenting on my hair since I was 13, you know? Um, so I don't think we, I think we should not stress about the things we can't control, which is what our clients are going to do, um, at their house right now. They're all bored and they all have hair that's growing and, and roots that are growing or whatever. Um, don't stress about those things cause you can't control them, but just think about what you're going to do to make yourself better and grow and become, um, you know, more successful when you get out of this, because people are going to have some jacked up hair <laughs> when, uh, this is all over with. So, uh, whether they cut it or they don't, it's, you know, it's not going to look great. They're not going to come out of this with beautiful hair. That's for sure. So we're going to have a lot of work to do on our customers. So don't worry about that. Um, the biggest thing that we can do is listen to everything that's going on. Listen to the people like I'm not going anywhere. The only place I go is here and there's no employees here. Um, and you know, you guys should do the same thing. Just listen so that we can get this over with as quick as we can all over the world. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So I want to get into education. Um, first things first, let me pull up. This is a haircut. So these three haircuts I, I've had on YouTube for a long time, but a lot of you guys, you know, you haven't been following me forever. Um, I would never assume that you guys have watched all 900 videos. So I picked a few of my favorites and I, I really like this kind of, uh, um, it's not a classic cut at all. It's very textured, kind of still lives in a modern way, I think. Um, but I love this, this cut. I don't even remember who the celebrity is cause I'm not a big celebrity, um, person. Like, uh, I'm sure it is a celebrity. Uh, and you guys can tell me in, in the chat who it is, but, uh, I love the textured feeling of this and the lived in feeling of it, but it's actually not much different than a regular Bob. So, uh, I want to pull up and we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to show you guys what, and I can pause this through it. So as you guys have questions, I can definitely see you. Uh, I can see all of that. So um, what we're going to do is we start off, I take a side parting. So I look at where does she part this haircut? What side is she parting it on? And then I base the haircut on that. So I look at, she she parts it on the left-hand side. She was kind of tossing it over. So I'll, let me rewind it a little bit. So you can see that she's kind of wearing it off to that side on the left-hand side. So when I go in and I go to part the hair, I make sure that, let's see if I can fast forward back in. Um, I make sure that I part on that side and that's how I start the haircut. So when a client comes in or uh, anybody that you're working on and you, you want to know where to start the haircut, usually where the person's going to wear it is a good place to start and then kind of base your sectioning off of that. So we're going to continue the sectioning uh, back and then kind of down center back. And then I section from the occipital bone over. And then we start cutting a basic blunt uh, line bob. Now, the one thing that I love to do when I'm cutting hair, when I'm, when I'm creating a bob or whatever, is I like to uh, take that baseline from occipital bone down and cut it at that point. Because what happens is there's a curve of the head, right? So the head kind of sits curved. And from the occipital bone down, it's the same uh, angle. And then from occipital bone up, it gets a little bit heavier. So if you cut a blunt line from occipital bone down, you get a nice feel to it. And when you elevate the hair, it almost looks and appears at a 45 degree angle. So you get a really nice soft angle. Anything above that, if you cut it blunt, it's going to be a little bit heavy. But um, all right, so let's continue going here. So now um, I cut that blunt line and that's where I'm going to work everything off of that. So cut the blunt line. I'm going to use the tip of the scissor, go through and cut through it. Now, if you guys have uh, any questions, make sure you post them and I'll answer those as well. 
So I just work through, cut that blunt line, make sure everything's balanced. Then I continue through. Now I'm going to cut horizontally, but what I'm going to do here, notice that I'm actually holding the hair um, horizontally, but I'm cutting everything with the tip of the scissor at an angle, doing almost like a point cutting technique, because what I want to do is break up that line. So even though I'm using horizontal, I'm still putting a little bit of a choppy line to start that texture off, really start creating that movement in the haircut. So same thing here, using that parting as my guideline, and that's what I'm watching through. Now we're going to continue through the haircut. What I'm going to do now is eventually I'm going to start to shift. So once I put in this shape, kind of create the stamp of what I want it to look like, uh, then we're also going to go in more vertical to remove even more weight. So still working horizontally through. Do I have a favorite pair of scissors brand name? Um, I love Mizutani scissors. You guys know that uh, for a long time. They created my scissors. So if you go on freesaloneducation.com, you can purchase scissors whenever you're ready. Um, but I sell all Mizutani scissors, and then I have my own scissor that is created by Mizutani as well. So a uh, big fan of that. The one I'm using here is the Mizutani DB20. So now notice that I'm elevating the hair. So I lift the hair up and I'm working vertically, the biggest difference between working horizontally and working vertically is horizontal is working on creating that shape and really making sure I had control of the shape. And now I start lifting the hair because I can easily, if I were to do that horizontally, I'd have to really get my body position out of whack. Uh, so I go in vertically, elevate the hair as much as I can and remove as much weight as I can throughout the haircut. All right. So now still horizontally through there. And then as I move into the side, then I'll shift and change that finger angle. Too bad this isn't taught in SC. I wonder, wonder what that means. What is SC? South Carolina? I think it's taught there. <laughs> um, all right. So now I'm continuing through. Still working that horizontal line. Again, I'm working on that shape, so the interior shape. Um, one thing that I think a lot of people, something that really clicked for me uh, when I was in beauty school uh, and then when I started my education career was understanding that there's really no difference between cutting horizontally and cutting vertically. The biggest difference is what you have control over. So if you look at vertically is kind of how you're, you're uh, determining that weight in a long form right? So how that's kind of going across, but when you work, um, or horizontally, sorry. So when I'm working horizontally, I'm working across the head shape. Actually, let me grab some. Got this plastic head here. Okay. So, um, let me take this. off. So if you look at this head, right now, as I'm cutting, when I'm cutting horizontally, I'm just working with the hair long ways this way. So what that does allows me to kind of work on that shape and how I'm transferring the weight back and forth horizontally. But what makes it harder is when you turn it forward and now you see a horizontal section is very thin uh, from a vertical standpoint. So from an elevation up and down. So when you work vertically, you've now got control of this, but you don't have as much control side to side horizontally. So the way that you kind of determine what you want to do in haircutting is you decide, do I really want to control the weight? Is that, or the shape? Is that what I'm really concerned about? Or do I want to control uh, the weight vertically and take out weight, or remove weight, or keep weight? So that's kind of, as you're going through a haircut, that's what you want to really think about, focus on, is what are you trying to control? In this particular haircut right here, I'm working the shape first on the bottom. So I'm working horizontally and I'm getting that shape in that base. Then what I do is I go in vertically from about the, uh, the division, or not the division line, the, um, oh boy, the, the round of the head. Uh, I've said this word a million times in my life, but today's a weird day. Um, the Prital Ridge, that's what it is. So I go from the Prital Ridge up, and I do that vertically so I can really remove that weight. Okay. Best haircut for curly gals. We'll do that. We'll do that for sure. This is actually a pretty good one. Uh, I did this. This is a wavy kind of feel to this or a natural wave. Now, not extra curly. I wouldn't go with this haircut, but um, if you have a natural wave, it's a pretty cool cut for that. Um, 
That's thin hair, scalp showing in the front. That's a gray. Okay. Um, this is the thing, guys, when you think about, like, what is the perfect, a lot of people say, what is the perfect haircut for me? Well, that is on an individual basis, so I can't show you the perfect curly haircut uh, because I don't know if that perfect haircut would be perfect for you uh, on your curly hair. Everybody's curly hair is different. Everybody's straight hair is different. That's why I like going through techniques on mannequins. And a lot of people are like, well, why don't you do a live model? Well, if I did a live model, that doesn't mean it's going to make it more beneficial for you. That just makes it more beneficial for that live model. So no one's going to give me a hard time about live models now because you can't go near people. But um, so as I'm going around, just think about these as techniques and picture what you could do with your clients uh, when you get back to doing them, what you could do with your clients to really make it benefit their hair. So I worked the round of the head all the way up through and you can see it gives me a little bit of disconnection on the front. So now I'm going to go through power blow dry, uh, doing a flat wrap technique, really just trying to uh, create the movement with the head shape. So I wrap everything around the head and then I'll go through and iron the hair real quick. And you'll see that disconnection in the front. That's from those rounded layers in that over direction. So now I'm going to go in, create some more texture using a texturizing scissor this is probably the Mizutani Type Z2 or the Uragi um, 6. Those are kind of my two favorite go-to texture scissors. So I go through, just soften those edges, uh, creating a little more texture into the haircut. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Alicia, I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, just going through that disconnection, you can have a lot of fun with. You can do all different things with it. But taking out some weight really gives you that flexibility and also creates that texture in the cut. All right. So now, see how that line that we cut underneath and then we have that disconnection from the top? So I just go through and I use that texture scissor to really just chew off, and chew off is a weird word, but take off the edges, but do it with texture and not just a blunt cut. So that's another cool little trick with a texture scissor to go through and just keep closing it and moving it a little bit slightly as you work up and down that uh, that section. And that gives you a really broken line, nice soft line for your end result. So now I'm going to go in, add some wave to it because that was kind of, you know, what this end style looked like. We also colored it black to go with the look uh, as well. So find your favorite 1AA or 1A uh, Demi color and put that over it if you want. And then a uh, nice texture paste. I throw that through, bring the hair back. And then what she had was kind of slicked back off of her face. So you can see that this is a nice textured bob. And then when you want to create that exact look, then I wet it down and then I diffuse it curly and give it a little more of a wet feel, brush back the one side, put a little more product into it. And then you can see that this kind of gives us that finished result um, from the same bob. And that's really where I think a lot of people, let me pause this. Um, that's where a lot of people, uh, I don't think they realize that it's with a lot of cuts, like it, it's more in the styling than it is in the cut in the first place. Like you need to cut it to the lengths, but then it's your technique, your skill of actually styling the hair that makes it, you know, that much better. So, all right. So that's the first cut. Whew. What'd you guys think of that? Do you like this kind of uh, chatter? Do you like this style of video? Um, I enjoy it because I get to see your actual expressions and how you're feeling about it as we're going. Seems like the people in the chat like it. Hopefully you're enjoying it and hopefully it's taking your mind off things. So we're going to get into the next cut. Um, should we do a longer cut? I'll just, let's do the longer one first. All right. So this one, I'll show you guys what it's going to look like. So this is going to be the end result of what we're going to go for. The thing I like about this cut is that it really has kind of a skinny texture to it. It's almost shag-like. Um, a lot of people requested yesterday that they wanted to see a shag. So I want to go in and kind of show you guys that. Um, so this can be pretty simple. Uh, again, the sectioning, all of that stuff is going to be very similar. Um, Cool. Everybody seems good to go on it. So, all right, here we go. So now uh, side parting, just like we said before, and then I'm going to divide the hair at the division point 
um, down to right behind the ear. Now, one key thing as I turn this head, I want to show you guys right there. So right there, you'll see that that division line, what I used to say a, a long time ago was that I wanted to split the ear right down middle of the ear, or that's what I was taught a lot in uh, hair school. Now I go right behind the ear to this point where the density is the same. So when the density reaches from the top all the way down to the nape, that's where I want to section it. I don't want to go too far towards the ear because everything from the ear on is also a different density than the back. So we want to be aware of that as we're doing this haircut. Okay. So now um, section again, division point. So I separate the front and the back and I'm going to brush that forward, comb that forward, flip it away and uh, get ready to get started. Now we're going to start in the front. And what I wanted to do is really have a nice buildup of weight in the fringe area. I also have a head sheet for this one, which is kind of nice. Um, so I'm taking everything, taking each section, over directing it. But notice that my finger angle matches the forehead. And that's a key thing there. Because if you layer this too much, it's going to fall um, just too choppy uh, and not really fall with the head shape. And that's the key to this cut is making sure that the, everything falls really nice and soft around the head shape. So notice that I go to the parietal ridge, bringing everything over to that uh, point there. Now, now I take a guide from the parietal ridge. So notice that right here, this is kind of a cool uh, point. So right here, I take my guide. I, I retake a guide from what I had already cut. So I'm kind of traveling with the head shape, which is really important when you think about how the head works. If I kept bringing everything over the parietal ridge over to the other side, um, I would get it would get too long, too heavy around the um, the chin, the jawline, that area. So what I wanted to do is just grab a guide uh, from the parietal ridge and then bring everything up to that point and cut it there instead of going all the way over the head. So bringing it up and over, but not fully over, if that makes sense. Let's see. Jennifer says, is there any way you could review at some point to avoid dog ears in an angled bob? Yeah, for sure. I actually, I have a video on that. So if you, um, if you Google the dog ear effect in my YouTube channel, you'll actually see a video that um, was hilarious because it blew up and uh, became very popular. I guess you call it viral. And, uh, it was people actually looking for not cutting their dog's ears. But, um, so that didn't really work out in my favor, but, uh, but yeah, you, the dog ear effect. And I explain all of that, but I'll do a, I'll do another class video for it as well. So the same thing on the opposite side, bringing everything up and over. Now the biggest difference here is that, um, I can really bring everything up and over because the, uh, I'm distracted by Brian in the background. Um, because I'm, not bringing everything too far across the forehead, across the forehead, right? So um, this would be the difference between a live uh, voiceover and not. So before I would have brought it all the way over the parietal ridge to the other side of the forehead. So that's why I didn't want to do that. But on the weak side, you're only bringing it up and over uh, just to the parietal ridge. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, last little bit, I grab a guide from the top. Now I'm going to work those layers. Everything's going to come back to that V so you can see it uh, in the, I should start doing these, um, uh, head sheets again on these videos because they're very helpful. Um, I cut everything straight back, bring everything over directed to the center back. Uh, and I just work, uh, vertical sections all the way across. Samar, I hope other people will jump in and help answer your question, but uh, he says off topic, but I need to know if, uh, if you can use blue hair dye for toning yellow hair that will give you green hair. Um, so don't do that. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're, you're a hairdresser asking this question. Um, but you got to use the color wheel and understand it, that violet's going to neutralize yellow, not, not blue. Um, blue will create green. So we just work our way through. Now, here's another thing that I want you guys to take a look at is how I'm combing the hair. Before I was wrapping the hair towards my body, um, as I was moving towards the left hand side of her head. Now that I'm moving to the right hand side to her right ear, I'm now pushing the hair 
I always want to push the hair towards the, the guideline. My guideline is in the very center back. So I want to push that hair on both sides so that everything stays consistent. What we tend to do as hairdressers, um, and I don't think they emphasize it enough in hair school, is that we kind of just comb uh, the hair up to the point and we don't think about where it came from uh, and where we're over directing it from. So really important to make sure that you're always pushing it to the place it needs to go. This is the fastest blow dry ever, uh, fastest iron work ever. And now we're going to go into the haircut. No one of these videos used to be six minutes long. Let's see. Let's play some music while we're blow drying this fast. Need a little tunes. There we go. All right. So smooth that out. Uh, you can see the precision on the cut. And now that line that I cut over the, fr over the fringe area, now I just break it up with a little point cutting. I do a little slide cutting through. I think this scissor that I'm using might be the Mizutani Type K that I actually just auctioned off last week. So uh, one lucky person's actually using this scissor that I have in the video. Um, so I go through and I just cut, soften the lines, but really keep the shape, right? So notice that even when I go in and I cut to texturize and to skinny up a little bit, I don't pull it anywhere that didn't live in the actual wet cut um, because that would change the entire shape of the haircut and you don't want to do that. So bringing everything up where it lived and just softening the edge, softening the lines. Peggy says, love this cut. Thank you, Peggy. Glad you like it. Working our way through. Feels nice to see the old salon in the video. We don't, we're not in that space anymore. It's the great thing about the internet guys is that when you think about things that you're creating and, and all that stuff, like it doesn't go away. So, uh, it was one of my favorite things about education in the salon in general is that, um, I used to be an educator and every week I would go in to teach classes. And, um, as much as I loved seeing everybody live, uh, you know, I would teach a class and then as soon as I walked out the door, it went away. And when I started doing this seven years ago, creating, uh, videos online, they never go away. They stay there forever. And now we can even recycle them and reuse them and uh, repurpose all of it. So, you know, it's pretty fun that way. So check out the texture in this cut. Really love how the movement that happens in it. All that comes from the precision of the cut, but then going in and actually texturizing it uh, to finish it off. So you can see the pieciness in the front. That's all from that slide cutting, the layers, the texture, um, all of that. So what do you guys think of that cut? Did you like it? Is there a better point cut to start with? Are you planning to do live video tomorrow and coming week? If yes, be great. Good education on this hard time. Absolutely. Uh, live video is going to become a very um, common thing. I also want to let you guys know that I, uh, you know, I've been holding this back for a while, but uh, I think it's important to get you guys excited about what's to come in the future. And my wife and I and um, Free Salon Education team have been working on creating a community and learning app uh, for you guys. It's going to be 100% free, uh, even though there may not be no sponsors for it, but uh, it's going to be 100% free. We've been working on it for 10, 11 months now, um, and it's going to be launching in seven days, hopefully. Um, and the only reason it's been like delayed over and over is because I just want it, we want it to be perfect. Um, and a really fun tool for you guys to use. And so we'll get you guys on there. It'll be free. You'll be training on there. Tons of videos. There's a community tab where you can share your work and I can see it and we can comment and you can ask questions about it. And uh, it's just going to be really awesome. Um, so that's coming up. And then uh, on top of that, your profile that you create on there will be visible to the public uh, on a stylist locator so that they can see your work, um, book an, or message you to book an appointment and to become a client of yours. So the whole purpose of this, um, you guys are getting uh, kind of an insider feed. I haven't really talked about this at all, um, but this is all coming in the next seven days. Uh, so my goal is we'll get you on there, get all of you guys signed up, get your training, look at your work, get it loaded. And then when we're ready to take clients again, um, that thing will be ready 
to assist you in, uh, you know, getting clients as well. So hope you guys are as excited about it as we are. Like me and my wife, uh, Christina have been like, uh, intensely, uh, anticipating and just excited about it. And I can actually show you a little kind of preview. Um, it's going to look a little bit different, but, uh, you've got all the different, uh, video tabs and videos on there. You've got, uh, community tab where you'll see everybody's work, uh, posted on there. You can see their profile. Um, it won't be like following each other because we're all going to be one community, uh, one team, which will be really exciting. Uh, you'll see reviews from customers on there. You'll be able to message your customers back and forth on there. So, uh, tons of really cool stuff coming your way on that. So hope you're excited. I'm, I'm really pumped for you guys to see that. Thing. All right. I got one more haircut for you guys. And this one's going to be a textured Bob, a little bit different than the first one, a lot different than the first one. Uh, this is a basic standard Bob, but with some layers. And, um, a lot of you guys yesterday, when I put out, what do you want to see, um, coming up, you said layers within a Bob or long hair with layers. And I'll do a long hair with layers video, uh, coming up. It's a little bit harder with a mannequin. So, um, I have some live model one, uh, videos that I can pull out and show you guys. So, um, so let's go through this cut here. Uh, you can see the texture. You can see it's got a little bit of a fringe to it. Um, and this one is actually cut with a razor. So it's going to be a little bit different than the ones that we did before. Um, so notice tons of texture, tons of movement has a lot to do with it being a razor. We're going to use the Donald Scott carving comb, which I've used, um, a lot in, uh, previous or past, not previous. Yeah. Previous videos. I'm losing my mind. Uh, so this is going to be a really fun cut, super simple to do with the uh, carving comb. So notice my sectioning is very basic. Uh, still going back to that division line all the way back to where the hairline kind of goes down. And then I take the carving comb, which has a hundred percent cutting side. And I work that section the same width as the carving comb. So I hold that entire th back section in my hand. That's what makes this so simple. And I work that carving comb at a 45 degree angle back and forth until I cut through with about a medium pass with the razor. So a key thing here is that when you use a razor to cut hair, the more you move that razor back and forth, the more layers you get and the more weight you take out, right? So, um, so just know that if I go really quick with the razor, I'm going to get a really heavy blunt line. If I go medium with the razor, I get a soft but graduated line. And then if I go real strong back and forth up and down, then I get layered effect just like I elevated the hair straight up in the air. So just know that those are the kind of the key differences. So I work that razor back and forth, medium, uh, like up and down strokes, and then everything's coming back to me. So you'll notice that I start to get a little extra length into the front. This is another uh, little tip for the person that said the dog ear thing, right? Um, just making sure that you don't go around to the ear so you don't curve around. Just keep everything straight back to you and you won't get that dog ear effect too much. Um, now, I'm using the 100% carve side. You could see the 50% cutting side on the opposite side of the carving comb. That's what really makes this tool unique, and I'm going to show you guys how to use that. If you want to get one of these, you can get it after the craziness goes away in the world, but we have them on our website, freesaloneducation.com. Look at that graduation that happens so quickly, so easily. Uh, I use Donald Scott Prepare to keep the hair saturated. Um, this has like... Uh, I don't work for them. Um, sunflower extract. It's got some kind of oily base to it, which I really love. And that's why I'm using it. Um, cause it, it makes the hair nice and soft and conditioned for using a razor, which a lot of people freak out that it's going to damage their hair. It won't as long as you take the proper precautions and you use a brand new blade every time you cut. So I go through and now you'll see that I'm kind of breaking things up. I want to do it almost an undercut feel to allow that hair to fall over top of it to give me a little extra texture. So I use the hundred percent cut side just to take out a little bit of that length underneath and allow the rest to fall over. Notice that's a little trick I like to do to create a little more graduation. Now I'm using the 50% cutting side and just sliding it over and removing some weight. That's kind of like doing point cutting. Um, just taking out a few different hairs, not an entire section. So 
Hopefully that makes sense. So now I let down the sides and I just connect them. Pretty simple. Just draw that line down. You could decide, do I want a lot of length in front? Do I want just a little bit of length in front? You get to make that decision. That's a cool part about using a razor tool. It's almost like drawing your line instead of cutting and over directing and doing those things all have their own purpose. But for this purpose and creating a textured bob, this works really well. So again, spray that prepare on there. And then I'm going to slide, glide the razor down. Any questions? Make sure you're tagging your friends. I love uh, seeing you guys sharing these videos. Uh, even when it's over, tag them. And because I'll keep doing this, we'll continue to do it. Um, and David, uh, so David's asking about the auctioned off Mizutani shears. So craziness in the world happened. So we still need to auction them off. We're going to auction them off um, this week for sure. Uh, 100% this week, if not tomorrow, probably tomorrow. We've been putting together the names and then we just have to draw the name. So um, we want to have our son do it as well because it was kind of for his thing. Um, but we haven't picked a winner yet and we're absolutely still giving away a scissor. Mizutani psyched about it. Um, so um, probably tomorrow. So no one's lost yet and no one's won. All right, so I finished it off. Uh, Iron work, you can see how smooth it is. And then I go in with my scissor just to clean up the edge, right? So a lot of you guys out there, you might just use one tool. One of my favorite things to do is mix up different tools. It's like you can't build something with one tool. You can't cook with one tool. So going in and actually, and here, I'm going to pause it because I want to go over this technique. Um, let me pause, let me rewind. But yeah, you don't, you don't want to just go through and use one tool uh, in your hair cutting because they create different feels feelings. So like uh, the Donald Scott carving comb, I really love because it has those two different sides. So you have the hundred percent cutting side, the 50% carving side. I go through, I create different textures now along the baseline or the outer perimeter of the haircut. I want to go in with a scissor and create an even better line uh, using the tip of the scissor that I can't do as well with that carving comb. So um, using the multiple tools to go in and create that. Now, as I go in here, I want to see how easily I can show you guys this next. So this next technique is called no thumbs. Um, I can show you guys with my scissor here. Let me flip over. So what I'm doing in this technique is actually taking the scissor, right? So I have it in my hand here. See if that'll, that's probably not. Good. So I've got the scissor here. I take my thumb out of the scissor and I place my pointer finger into the scissor hole, right? So all of you guys are confused now, I know. So you take your thumb out, you put your pointer finger in, and you pinch it with your thumb. And what you're doing is you're actually opening up the scissor by moving your ring finger. So I take my ring finger and I lift up, and then I s uh, close it, and I lift up, and I close it. So what I do is I move the hair, so I cut like this, I pick up the hair and I go through and I just take little pieces out using this no thumbs technique. Now, this is something that uh, Takashi worked for Paul Mitchell a long time ago. He works for a different company now, um, but was a big inspiration in uh, the initial uh, me learning. I, I didn't learn to cut a straight line for about five years uh, in haircutting because I just tried all these tricks and uh, learned all that fun stuff first. Uh, which actually I kind of like that I did it that way because I, I know there's a lot of precision hair cutters out there that would never cut and do things like that. I love that I learned that first and then learned more precision cutting so that I could kind of combine the two uh, for more salon reality textured looks and just having fun uh, cutting hair because if it's not fun, then why are we doing it? So I'm going to show you guys what it looks like, but that's basically what it, the technique is, just pinching the scissor and lifting up and down cutting. I'll show you guys here what it looks like. It's going to be fast. So I lift up the hair and then I do that little quick motion with my fingers and cut through the hair. Finish it off using the tip of the scissor, working my way through there. Um, I didn't want a perfect line. Uh, it's, you know, that's a pretty popular look now or currently is having that choppy bob. So 
Um, even back then, I didn't want that perfect line in this cut. I wanted a ton of texture and movement in it. <laughs> Lynn says it's not that easy. I've been trying. Keep trying. Um, this is one thing. So I guess that's the, uh, oh, that's not the end. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, oh, now we got another technique. Cool. So um, Lynn says, you know, it's not that easy. I've been trying. Here's the, here's one crazy thing. So when I was in beauty school and this kind of can go with what you guys are going through now is I would literally sit, um, watching TV shows or just sit in my room, listen to music or whatever I was doing. And I would just have my scissor in my hand and I would spin my scissor. I would pretend to cut and I would just continue doing this. I would grab a comb. I'd pretend to comb. I'd hold the scissor out. I'd pretend to cut. And I would just keep doing this until it became kind of second nature. And even to this day, you know, just going through, I can remember doing that. And then, you know, no thumbs technique. I would take big old clunky scissors and I would practice this to work that muscle in my hand. It's probably why I'm going to have carpal tunnel soon, but you know, just working through and learning these techniques, the stroking technique, uh, practicing opening and closing the scissor, you know, spinning the scissor, all of these things, I would just continue to practice and practice. And when we're in the salon, when we're stuck behind the chair 12 hours a day, you know, we don't want to go home and practice that. Not everybody does. And when you're working, you know, 40, 50 hours a week behind the chair, you don't want to spend the other time practicing and doing that stuff. Not everybody. Now, I, I'm, I wanted to do that. I, this was, I was obsessed over it. But a lot of us don't want to do that. So think about now you have the time. You have the time to learn, to get better. Order a mannequin. Pivot Point's still shipping. I just bought 15 of these so I could keep teaching you guys. You know, they're still open and, you know, it's an investment. And as long as you don't go and hack off all the hair right away, you can do a ton of haircuts on one um, mannequin. So um, that's that. All right, so here's the next technique I want to show you guys. This one, this one's with the puffin. So you can see, why I paused again. All right, so you can see it's moving quick. So I'm going to break it down for you guys as well uh, because this is kind of the last little bit of our time today together. Um, Tons and tons of texture happening from this haircut. Did I slow it down? So what I'm doing is I'm removing weight and I'm doing it in a really soft kind of texturizing way. So, all right. So here's the breakdown of that technique and I'll show you. So what you do for that one is keep your scissor in your hand the normal way. I'm actually going to grab a different one. This black one's hard to see. So you got your scissor and what I do is I, I pinch the hair over it and I slide the scissor in and as I'm sliding it in, I half close it so that I create this kind of V in here and I pinch the hair into it. So I'll pinch the hair with my hand, pull it into the scissor, and then I'll pull the scissor up into the hair. And as I'm sliding it in, I close the scissor a little bit, and then that teases the hair in and removes a little bit of it, not a lot. And then when I let it out, um, I get a really soft edge to it. So if you have a client that has the dog ears or um, you have a client that has super thick hair and you're just trying to lighten it up, but you don't want to change the shape too much, Just going in, doing a little bit of that tease cutting technique. It's one of my favorite things. It takes out that weight, works really, really well. Uh, So I'm going to rewind it so you guys can see that play through one more time. And you can see the technique. So I just pinch the hair, go through half closing, working some of that weight out. You can see how it just texturizes the ends of it. Now I go in with a cream paste. Um, Grab your favorite cream paste. I don't care which one it is. And uh, work through it that way a little bit of hairspray to finish it off. And then this is our final technique. Um, You could see the texture that came through on that bob. Really, really cool haircut that you can do uh, right now. And it's still going to be popular. Uh, It doesn't go away. All right. Would you recommend back cutting for curly hair? So I'm guessing the tease cutting is what you're talking about, um, which some people could call it back cutting. Um, Yes, it's that tease cutting technique is one of my favorite things to do on curly hair uh, because scissors are sharp. So as you're teasing in, you're really just cutting some of it. You're not really roughing up the cuticle too much uh, as long as you're doing it correctly. So it works really, really well. 
Um, all right, cool. It seems like you guys enjoyed the podcast. Did you? Um, I hope you did. Uh, we're going to be back. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to do some more live stuff. I don't know what time because I'm just playing these days as they come. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to post like right before I do it on there. So, you know, but following me on YouTube is the best way to get your alert that, you know, I'm live and you know, what's happening. You can always watch them back too. You don't have to watch them right that second. Uh, everybody's got not a lot going on, but a lot going on at the same time. Uh, so I understand all of it. Uh, I had tons of people tuned in tonight. I really appreciate all of you. Um, I wish you all, you know, stay healthy, stay inside, um, learn, grow. Uh, we're all going to get through this together. All, a lot of people are putting out live stuff. Some of my friends have been putting out, uh, you know, live music. They're playing music in their house. Like, it's just fun. Uh, it's As much as it's a crazy time right now, it's actually really interesting to just sit back and watch it all unfolding and and how we can become closer together so the fsc community is going to get nothing but stronger i'm so excited to you know obviously for the salon industry to get going again but at this time let's just stay focused keep learning keep pushing each other uh, stay connected to each other and i really really appreciate all of you guys so uh thank you if you have any questions post them in the comments below uh, i can't wait to see you guys again tomorrow i'll uh I think that's it. Go to MinervaBeauty.com. Check out the sales they're having. If you guys have a little extra cash, you want to invest in some new stuff for your salon, uh, go do it through my friends there. And uh, let me know what you want to see on that technique because Joyco sent me that fun color and I want to uh, do a color technique for you guys uh, as well, uh, hopefully tomorrow. So, all right, guys. Thank you. FreeSaloneducation.com for all the other videos and I'll see you tomorrow.